I've wanted to do this lightning talk for a while. Uh, we recently had a very long project uh, of getting off of our old monitoring system, which was Nagios and Graphite and a combination of uh, other homegrown pieces of software, and onto something more standard, and uh, we chose Prometheus. Uh, I know there's a lot of talks like this, but this one's kind of a lessons learned and what I would do different or what I would do the same uh, if I had to redo this project. Uh, me, Patrick O'Brien, I like cooking, dogs, tacos, and uh, a new hobby, skiing. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I'm an SRE at the Trade Desk. Uh, we're based in Ventura, California, but we have many offices worldwide. We're always hiring, uh, if interested. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Here we go. Slide one. Think about your hard alerts. Uh, a lot of legacy alerting systems have uh, a lot of alerts defined in them that you don't necessarily need anymore. Um, and you know you can cut a lot of them. 90% um, of those alerts will be insanely easy to move over. It's the remaining 10% that will be difficult, and you will want to think up front and ahead of time, how are we actually going to get this useful alert into this new system? Because oftentimes, like especially coming from Nagios, we'll have Python scripts that do many different things in that single script to kind of figure out if there is an issue. Uh, those are the hard ones, and that's where your longest tail of the project will be. Uh, I asked a question earlier to the uh, Prometheus developers about documentation. Uh, the official documentation for Prometheus is extremely clinical, and I think that's by design. And I'm super happy to now hear that we can contribute better documentation. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we had to rely on kind of learning PromQL ourselves, uh, learning how Prometheus works itself, uh, and then writing that internally for our users because you know pointing them at the super clinical Prometheus documentation wasn't always super helpful. Uh, and you will get a lot of PromQL questions when you start rolling out Prometheus, and it's best to kind of become an expert in that as much as possible. Uh, do maths. Uh, we immediately hit cardinality issues because uh, we have a lot of hosts, and you know we kind of sold it as don't embed any metadata into the alert name or not the alert name the metric name, make it generic, add labels. Uh, we hit two million metrics in a single namespace in like 30 seconds. It was terrible uh, and it was very painful. Uh, and having to kind of walk back on the, oh, well, in this case, maybe embed some metadata in that uh, metric name. Uh, it was not fun. Uh, internal evangelists are insanely helpful. Um, I can talk about how implementing Prometheus will improve the quality of life for people, uh, but it's really internal inv evangelists who will actually show people and have those connections that I might not necessarily have. and so. If they're around, like we had a fantastic one who's here, uh, Nathan, say hi. There we go. Uh, he was great because uh, he knew much more, uh, many more developers than I knew. And so he was able to kind of work with them, show them in code how it works, show them the benefits, um, and was able to reach much further than I was able to reach. It was fantastic. Uh, create a dedicated team. Um, especially if you're a large company, if you can. Uh, the more opinions on how to do something, the better. Um, just, it makes sense. Um, get involved in the community. Uh, this one kind of speaks for itself. You learn more about the product, you learn more about the project, and you're able to help everybody else out. And last, we're hiring. Um, I think now we do like 11 million requests a second, which is kind of all right. Uh, so if you like big data, if you like a lot of requests uh, per second and large scale, we're perfect for that. And that's it. Thank you very much, Patrick.